Theresa is in a foul mood. I'm annoyed this morning. So it's actually easier to be up here than it is to be down there. But don't laugh at me. <laughs> Beautiful day, I'm cheerier now. Can't help but be cheery on a day like today. You look like a very happy skipper. I am, I am very happy. The percentage of good sales we get to bad sales is- Not what it should be. 10% like amazing sales is one of the top 10%. But like days like this is why we go sailing. We had just spent a week in the charming village of Camaray sur Mer, a favourite destination amongst French and English sailors travelling north or south between the two infamous tidal races located at the extreme western point of France, the Ra de Seine and the Chenal du Four. Camaray sits neatly between the two, providing a convenient stopover to wait for weather and tyres to make the next passage. Our Ra de Seine transit had gone perfectly smoothly, and now we had to plan for an equally pleasant sail through the Chenal du Four. To ensure a safe and uneventful passage around this challenging coastline, we had to make sure our navigation was on point. So, the night before leaving, we sat down to plan the finer points of the passage yeah. ahead. So it says, with a fair wind, aim to go through the fore when the tide is favourable. If the wind is ahead, go through the narrow part of St. Mathieu at slack. We need to know when we're going, so... That's right. Six hours after high water breast, it's slack, and then six hours before... So it's low water breast, yeah. yeah. The tidal area C. 12:44 p.m. tomorrow. 12:44 p.m. We can start going north. Right. So we need to get to here no earlier than 12. What did you say? Time you say low water was? 12:40. Two, four, six, eight. Eight. Eight miles. So we need to leave here probably 12.40, so 11.40, probably about 11? 11 o'clock. Not before 11, otherwise we'll get there too early. Yeah. And actually we should hit that about slack. It's not that strong. And it doesn't need to be hit at slack, we just need to make sure that the stream is going north. Yeah, and then we'll, we'll go shooting up there for about for five, six hours. I think it's probably, that's probably the buoy. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. there's rocks there, and there's a transit line through there. So I think you go through there. Yeah. Yeah, there's rocks there that are wash at low water. They will be buoyed. Anyway, but basically, once we go through there, we're through the Chanel de Four and we go on. Yeah, that's right. Get that out of the way. The lab rack's there. Uh-huh. Five, ten. Have I got this right? Is that can't be five miles. Forty to us. It's ten. That changes things. Oh my God. I'm like, this is going to be a doddle. <laughs> right, okay, so it's 20 miles from the Chanel de Four to lab rack tomorrow. Ten. 20, 20. Yeah. Okay, that makes that's. Laverack to. That's to a day, yeah. Roscoff onwards. It's actually a big one. I think this, this is actually pretty. We did this before. It's a real narrow passage. Yeah. 10, 20, 30. 40. 40. It's a long day, that is. Yeah. Okay. And then, then from there, because Brie has a good jump point. Yeah. 10, 20, 30. Fine. 30, yeah, call it 40 to get to St Helier. Forward planning is always necessary when sailing, but it was particularly crucial in these coastal waters of North Brittany, as every passage had to be timed to coincide perfectly with the tides. We were also starting to get a bit nervous about staying in France much longer, as COVID cases were on the rise again, and we didn't want any further delays in getting back into UK waters. So it was time to get moving north. But first, a trip into town and a trip up the mast. A glorious morning. I know. I don't think we've had a morning like this for a while, actually. It doesn't feel like Whitney for once. I know. We feel like... La Rochelle. Yeah. Southern France. Yeah, it does feel like Southern France. Or at least somewhere warmer. Good morning. Our last morning in... Oh, it said Sab de Lone. <laughs> Camaray Sourmer. Living in the past. We've been here, what, eight days, nine days? Yeah, we've been here, I don't know, a long time. It feels well, like forever. 
uh, a little uh, trip for my parents for their birthday stroke wedding anniversary. Yeah, so we had Nick's parents come out to stay for a few days. That was really nice. This is as west as we get. It is actually. The last time we were this west, this far west, we were in the Azores. So we're going to continue going east from now yeah, on. Yeah, so we, we go north for 10 miles and then we start heading east. Mm. And then most of our journey now should have east in it until we get back home. Well, we looked at the weather, the prevailing wind southwesterly. At, or there's normally west in it, but we're getting easterlies of all bloody things as soon as we get around the corner on Friday. <laughs> yeah. So we've got to... We've we got find, to, we were like, oh, when we get around the corner, we'll finally like be with the prevailing winds instead of like trying to go against them, which no. we've been doing all season so far. But no, as soon as we get around, we get easterlies. Well, we just, just sit for a few days. Anyway, yeah. um, navigation is... Challenging, I think, is the wrong word. You've got to be a little bit on point with the nav, haven't you? You do, you just need to be very aware. Yeah, you've got to be aware that there's a lot of rocks and a lot of tides yeah. and a lot of currents. And uh, did I say rocks? <laughs> and some fairly dodgy weather sometimes. Yeah. So <laughs> yes. So yeah. So that's our plan. So we've got uh, about 40 miles to do today. This is our early morning. Um, go, go for it, this. Be careful; it's soaking wet. This is our uh, early morning dash to the Boulangerie. It's a beautiful morning in Camaray sur Mer. Bonjour. Bonjour. So Nick and I have been kind of half joking, half serious about the fact that once we're around the corner, so once we're on the north coast of, of Brittany, which we will be by this evening, then we are literally a day sail away, albeit a very long day sail, away from, um, from, from England, from Cornwall or Devon, yeah. which is a very strange thing to think because we have been gone from the UK for five, five and a half years. Yeah. So the fact that we're like, after all this time, almost back on our boat is uh, really mind blowing. And there's like this magnetic pool. I have to say there is a pool, the pool of home. We're like so close. It's uh, gonna be hard to resist. All right. Yes. All right. Selection of pastries to start the day. Now why in the cars, my love? I'm up the mast. Um, I'll tell you why I'm up the mast. There you go. I just wasn't happy with the, the connection. There was a slightly dodgy connection in our tri-head mast light, seeing as we're probably gonna be doing some night sailing. Um, I came up to have a look. Also, don't tell anyone, Teresa is in a foul mood. So it's actually easier to be up here than it is to be down there. I'm gonna have some breakfast. I'm annoyed this morning, possibly because I'm hangry, but also because I lost my hair tie and it's hot down. I can't tie my hair up, it's like a bobby pin and it keeps falling out. And more probably importantly, we've lost the GoPro mount, so we can't like use the GoPro. I'm really annoyed. It's pretty nice up here. I can't feel my legs, my nuts. I'm not quite even sure where they are at the moment, somewhere somewhere betwixt belly button and throat. And um, but yeah, beautiful view. So uh, we'll get this check checked, put it all back together, and then we'll head off again. Hmm. Nice pan of raisins, though. What are you grumpy for? Well, because I lost my hair tie and I've lost the GoPro mount all in the one morning and all before breakfast. I know that I annoy you a lot of the time. I know, you tell me on a regular basis when we're having a row. So I've got a many, many of different points, but not until the end of this. Don't, don't laugh at me. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. Did you realise it being unreasonably bumpy this one? And then I fell over on the boat. <laughs> what? Let's make a bet. When we find the GoPro mount, I bet you, I don't know, something of your choice. Mm -hmm. 
it is somewhere totally weird and mysterious that you put it in. Quick update to the um, lost GoPro mount situation. Yesterday, Nick went into his snack cupboard. Yes, he has a snack cupboard full of lollies and licorice and uh, ginger. What else is in there? Chocolate. Cupboard full of stuff. Just for him. Went to pull out a quality street or whatever and found the GoPro mount. Fairly sure I did not put this into Nick's snack cupboard. So mystery solved. Why he chose his snack cupboard to put the GoPro mount will forever remain a mystery. But at least we found it and uh, now I can use the GoPro again, which is very exciting. Shall we make a move? Bow's already on a slip. I don't know if the camera is picking it up, but you can actually see the current like as soon as you get out of this protected part of the marina. Right there at the entrance, you can see the current coming out. I think we're at Springs, so it's probably quite strong. Nick, can you see the current? The current is like ripping out. No, oh, goodbye camera. I'm sad to be going. It's been such a lovely couple of weeks here. I think it's been about 10 days. We uh, have had some really nice walks, you know, we've just had a chance to settle in and, and just get used to being in one place for a bit. Main's going up. <laughs> So like days like this is why we go sailing. Yeah. Six miles we get to take a turn and then we should really have the wind of like literally on a faint reach. Yeah. Lovely day. Beautiful day. I'm cheery now. Even though we lost our GoPro mount, I'm still cheery. Can't help but be cheery on a day like today. We just ran over a submerged lobster pot and we didn't see it come out the other end. <laughs> that sounded okay to me. Yeah, I don't like I don't like things like that. No, well. There's lobster pots all around here, all along the Atlantic coast actually, like between here and Portugal. Um, yeah, you just have to really keep an eye out. They're usually fairly close to, to shore, so if you're offshore it's not usually a problem. But um, yeah, you get a, uh, a rope caught in your prop and well you lose your prop or you don't lose it you just lose it the ability to use it until you can dive underneath and uh, and untangle it and we've had that a few times before you okay I can't see that we picked anything up I feel like we would have felt it we were going quite slowly yeah I feel like we well that wouldn't be due to the prop the engine's not on did you just bring the keel up? A little bit, yeah. Yeah, it's ran up the It's just dropped off. Oh, oh great line. Jesus. Well done, you. Can you see that, everyone? It's like in there. That line, I could see it through the water. It's a great line. Like a really, really lot. It wasn't like a, there was no like lot. Like a thick line. Yeah, like a thick line. That's why we have a bar. That's why we have a lifting keel boat. 
You pull the keel up and it drops off. Well, I was worried that it would get caught like between the keel and the hull. Ah, that's a diving job. So yeah, we're boat speed drop by 0.4 of a knot. Oh, and um, we're dragging. What's that attached you down the bottom, like a lobster pot? No, it may have been a lobster pot, but there was no marker boy. Like a fisherman wouldn't have found it unless it had yeah. a GPS tracker on it. Always trust your spidey senses. And he had a feeling that was caught underneath the boat, and I was like, I think it's fine. He was right. He usually is. I don't say that in his hearing, but he usually is right. <laughs> so how far away are we from the Shenandoah Uh Just shy of five miles from the, from the waypoint. At that waypoint, we'll... Uh, we turn north, um, we're bang on for a one o'clock arrival. Okay. So we should pick up slack and at that point over the next three or four hours, in fact we get seven hours of uh, fair tide. Mm -hmm. So we should, it's a spring as well, we're in springs as well. Mm. So I think by the time we're two hours after slack, we should have two knots behind us. Yeah. So we should be going along at six and a half, seven knots. Mm. The true wind isn't that high, there's only about five knots of wind. Yeah. We're creating most of this wind ourselves. Yeah. So, you know, we're keeping up with that big animal over there. Are we? Yeah. Yeah, she's we are. Just, she's just squeezing past. Wow. And she's got like a mizzen up as well. Yeah, that's right. It looks like we're in a fleet of about one, two, three, four, five, about six boats all going to the Chanel de Four. Do you reckon they're all coming in out in the same direction? We're on a course of about uh, 270, 280. Yeah. So there's north, there's north in, their, in their course. Right. So, um, so probably. They're just going for a day set up and down there. Yeah. Everyone's heading through today. Yeah, well, it was a perfect day for it. Very light winds, obviously, beautiful sunshine, and, you know, spring tide, so you get a nice little ride up. But I think the maximum tide will flow will be about three knots today. It's not like the Rider Sandwich does eight. Hush, little baby, don't say a word. I think Nick's in a good mood today. He's just got the code zero out of the locker. He only does that when he's in a good mood. <laughs> He's been fiddling with the sails all morning, chewing them, adjusting them. So I can tell that he's happy, despite my, my grumpy start to the day, which I do feel a bit bad about. Lovely boat right next to us. They look like they're also out for a nice little sail. They've got big smiles on their faces. You look like a very happy skipper. I am. Yes. I am very happy. I knew you were in a good mood because you were... Uh, fiddling with the sails and putting the code zero up and... It's not in a good mood, it's just that, you know, as, I, as we know, and we've talked about this extensively, the percentage of good sails we get to bad sails is... Not what it should be. 10% like amazing sails. Yeah. And 10% good sails. Yeah. And then probably 60% average sails, 10% bad sails, and luckily we've got the aw bloody awful sails down to a minimum, yeah. but we do occasionally get caught out. This is one of the top 10%. I know, it's fantastic. And we're making good speed. We've got 5.2 five, five knots. The wind's dropped off, is it? The wind hasn't dropped off, but we've got, we, because we're back to the beam now, yeah. with the apparent wind is dropping. Exactly. So we're literally sort of got the colors up just to try and get as much as we can. Look at that beach. Darling, I know it's hard to let go. Soon I will hold you again. Longer days when losing the wind. Away, but we'll both pretend. I feel like we're sitting still. Well, we're doing five knots, so. Oh. We've got a current with us. Do we let off the sheet? All right. This can't be right. We've got four knots of apparent wind and apparently we're doing four knots. What time is it? Quarter past one. That, that time is wrong. It's about half an hour after low water. We're doing four and a half knots with only four knots of apparent wind. We must have a lot of a lot of time with us. God, these beaches are just unreal. All right, so having thought about it, we are going to go into the marina. 
Um, the alternative is going up river and anchoring about a mile up river. But we're not sure what we're doing in the next few days. There's a pretty decent chance we might end up just staying here because there's um, a lot more a reasonable amount of rain coming through and it's going to be quite cloudy so if we do end up staying here then we won't really have like we won't be able to charge our batteries using the solar and uh, the wind generator doesn't really give us much unless it's like really really windy which is not going to be so we are going to go to the marina so we have shore power yeah we're still not sure when we're leaving I don't know <sighs> what a lovely lovely place another boat pissing past us Right, one quick shower later. I think I've still got a little bit of hat hair going on. We are uh, gonna head out. I've gone to the office and I've checked in. Paid for one night, babe, so um, we're all paid up until tomorrow. It's very small, there's not a supermarket or anything here. It's just like a few bars and that's it, and a beach. There's nowhere to have a beer. That I do know. There you go, mother. They have a lot of uh, ale on tap. Oh, that'll make you happy. It did. What are we drinking? Um, I've got a blanc. I've got a, a blanche, and you've got a, a, a blonde d'abbé made by monks. What? Monks from this abbey beer. Ah. Oh. Cheers. Cheers, Anna. Very satisfactory. Oh, that's nice. Proper beer, that yeah. is. Yeah. It's a proper beer. A bit more going on than I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> you got me a big one, I see. You also a big one. So, mm -mm. You did. I didn't specify size. I just said blonde. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a brothel. <laughs> ah, well. Another day sale. Another day sale, another day done. 40 miles closer to home. Yeah. We're going to break the 100 soon, babe. I know. So thank you so much for watching this week's episode. We are 100 miles from home. And after six years of being gone, it's a strange feeling to know that we just have a dash across the western approaches and we're back in the UK. Anyway, if you like this episode, feel free to click down below so that you firstly subscribe to the channel. We've got lots of cool stuff on here. Also, there's a notification bell in case you don't ever want to miss an episode and we will see you again real soon. Goodbye.